another busy week in the world of professional wrestling, which kind of is odd because it's December. So it's a little bit, it's, you know, you figure it might be a little bit of a downtime, but no, they're getting heated up, you know, because Royal Rumble will get here before you know it and everything else. And to help me dissect it all, joining me on the hotline, it is the managing editor for WrestleZone, my good friend, Bill Pritchard. Bill, how are things up in the Northeast? Good. Chilly. Yeah, I got a little chilly here, you know, last couple. I say chilly. I mean. In Texas. Yeah, it's <laughs> Texas chilly. It, it, yeah. uh, it's Austin chilly. So, you know, got down. It, we did get. I think we got down in the mid thirties overnight. Might, oh, okay. might have been a light freeze out in the hill country, but today it was sixty eight, so it couldn't be too bad. So, uh let's hit WWE uh, SmackDown. Charlotte Flair and Oscar, great match, and then all of a sudden, you and you, I if you watched, I think you could tell. Mm-hmm. Charlotte Flair hits hits the the moon salt. She comes down odd and basically, you know, tears up her knee. That it feels like Charlotte Flair here the last several months, it's been real on and off. So she'll you know she'll be on for a couple months and then she's off for a few months and she's back mm-hmm. on and. Now this, you know, obviously injury, it's going to take some time. I have not heard. Have you heard any, anything further about the possible knee injury to Charlotte Flair? Nothing than, than what came out of the, the initial thing about, you know, she tore up her knee. It looks kind of bad. It wasn't a storyline wait, waiting to hear more. Cause you know, it's a tough break. Like you said, she's been kind of like there and off. I think the the first time she had to get something fixed um and then the second time she asked for time off or maybe i'm getting those the order of those reversed but uh yeah definitely a tough break because it seemed like you know she was just getting back into the thick of things you have what i would consider a a big time match with oscar wrestlemania 34 rematch so definitely a tough break for her really is and then you know you feel bad for her. of course all the best to her she recovers hopefully you know uh you know hopefully it's not as bad as it looks maybe you know the recovery time won't be as as long but yeah gotta wait and see about that um i want to ask you this so so this past friday it was smackdown but it was also the tribute to the troops mm-hmm so they were in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, you know, had a lot of soldiers and sailors and airmen and Marines in the crowd. And you had Bobby Lashley, former Army veteran, in 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 the uh, U.S. title tournament, gets the win. It it feels like they have really tried to make him and the Street Profits heels. But the crowd isn't really, I mean, they kind of, they're kind of trying to go along, but it's one of those things. It feels like don't, don't make them heels. They, they're mm-hmm. almost not heels. And of course, Friday night, you got a former army vet getting a win in front of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines kind of hard to be a heel when, mm-hmm. when you're, you got kind of a pro crowd in your mind do you see bobby lashley and street profits as heels right now or or is it are they having a hard time making them heels i think it's a tough sell uh, and it'd be a lot easier if it was still just like lashley and mvp but i think when you you had the characters that the street profits did for so long and then to all the, it maybe it wasn't even all of a sudden, but still, like, people are, are used to years of seeing them in a certain way. I think there's going to be an adjustment period. Um, I like the trio together. It's just, I don't, you know, I don't really want to boo them either. 
Yeah. Like, you know, they, they had the, we want the smoke and the red cups and all that. And it, it worked for years and I, I'm not going to be too hard on them for trying, but I think, you know, it's a really tough sell at the end of the day. You know, and that's the, that's the thing. It, I, yeah, I'm with you. I like, I like them together. I just think, I just don't think they should, I think they should go continue on as baby faces. And I think Bobby almost relishes being a baby face. You see, you see the, you know, his reaction when he gets cheered. He's one of those, you know, you always hear about wrestlers would rather be heels than, than baby faces, but it just feels like Bobby likes being a baby face. And so I'd mm-hmm. say, I'd say go, you know, just go with it and let them be baby faces. I don't know. It's, it's always hard. I and mean, like you said, they've had that act for so long. It's, it's hard to make that turn, especially as popular as they were. So, um, <laughs> We got Roman Reigns coming out coming this this coming Friday is periodic appearance. I mentioned this, I forget who. It's kind of odd that SmackDown seems to be the show of part time champions because you got Roman Reigns as the as the Universal Champion and Logan Paul as the US champion. Neither one of them we're gonna see with any type of frequency i uh, i think we might see logan paul more than we do roman reigns when you, you think, think about it the way it feels yeah I, I don't know i mean i i guess uh i suppose it'll be it'll be this you know i i said it months ago the bloodline thing has has jumped the shark Mm-hmm. It, very much so and it's t- it's time to wind that down and it's it i think it's getting close to time to finally take the title off of roman give me your thoughts on roman reigns as it stands today and what you think should happen in the neg well i guess you know leading up to WrestleMania there in in Philadelphia. I I I wonder if they thought ahead long term about what you just said about the part time champions because both of them aren't there, and they've kind of got away with carrying the past couple of weeks with like Nick Aldis and Randy Orton making the decision, and then last week CM Punk's decision. They can only get away with it for so long. And yes, Christmas is coming up, so they'll probably do some kind of theme show there but i really feel like yeah it's time to start figuring out the end game like who's going to beat roman or who's going to beat logan paul because it just you need champions there like i don't don't need them wrestling every week like i know i'm not asking that but you need them more than what is it like once every eight weeks it feels like and that's maybe being generous about roman reigns like he's barely there. And it, at first it was like, okay, excusable. He did so much through the pandemic or, oh, he did, you know, he sort of earned that spot. And like, if you want to still be part-time, that's fine. But when you're holding the championship like that, you need, you need to be there like more frequently, whether it's just putting in an appearance or not. What? Remind me, were you in the, were you at the press conference after WrestleMania 39 where, I think it was Heyman that said, we're in the third inning of this. I'm the one that asked him that. Okay, I was going to say, I thought so. (laughs) Yeah. If that was the third inning, we have finally gotten to about, at the very least, bottom of the eighth. Yeah. Yeah, Because when he said third inning, my eyes just rolled back. It's like, no. Well, it's funny because he, I think he told me bottom of the third. And then somebody else asked him a similar question. And I think he said it was top of the third or the middle of the third. So it was like he only moved, you know. Yeah, he only gave you so much. Well, and like I said, it's look, it, it's it's wonderful, and I get Triple H wants to modernize the records. Okay, fine. You're not gonna, you're not gonna beat Bruno's record. There's no way on earth. 
Mm-hmm. And I, at the he's, rate it is right now, you're not going to beat Hogan's. He's close to one of them, though. He's, just, close, he's close to one of Hogan's. It's yeah, it's one of Hogan's. I don't think it's the four year reign, which, well, I guess he is kind of close to that one. I just, I just really don't, I don't think we want to see, you know, another six, eight months. You know, it's, it's really easy to hold a title for, you know, 1400 days when you defend it three times in a year. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all, it's almost as bad as UFC. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, found out that Carmelo Hayes is the NXT entrant in the U.S. title tournament. He's going to face Grayson Waller on Friday. Just saw on NXT, he gets jumped, and they're looking at his knee. I would suspect that's the out for him to take the L. On Friday night? Um, Real quick, I looked it up. Um, Hogan's title, the title reign was 1474. Okay. Reigns is at 1199. Or 1474, 1199. So still, if you think about it, another 274, 275 days he would have to hold it. So That's basically nine through months. SummerSlam almost. Can we deal with that when we're thinking he should have lost it at last year's WrestleMania? He might lose it this time. So I I will I will you know I'll to my dying breath I'll say he should have lost it to Cody last year. Yep. Um to hold it until SummerSlam this in 2024. Man, I that's that's not I, I that's not a that's not a rain that I want to see. If there was more steam behind it. So but that's the thing. The, there, there is none. There, there isn't. I mean they're limping along with Solo and Jimmy. They're trying to keep this thing going it's but it really has just it, i hate to say it again it's jumped the shark it's no longer a deal we've gone on you got the, you got judgment day kind of taking over as the top faction so to speak um and like you said with roman making an appearance every eight to ten weeks it's like you almost it feels a little like back when Brock Lesnar had the title and you forget about it until, Oh, Oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's right. Brock Lesnar's a champion. I, and I'm like you, I don't need to see him wrestle every week, but you know, even Ric Flair appeared on world championship wrestling at least every couple of weeks with that big gold belt. Mm-hmm. So why can't Roman, you know, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, now we can get back to Carmelo Hayes. Yeah, Carmelo Sorry Hayes. For the set. Sorry for no, the sidebar. No, that's okay. Carmelo Hayes, like I said, he was jumped at the beginning of NXT tonight. They look like they're looking at his knee. Is this the out to give him to have Grayson Waller advance in the in the tournament, or does he make some miraculous comeback and pin Waller? I'm gonna I'm gonna say Waller beats him. I this is one time where I kind of like the storyline taking precedent over the tournament because they've been doing this for weeks, if not months, in NXT with attacking Trick and now attacking him. And I am look looking at highlights now. Uh, you know the the whole thing with Lexus King. He was like, yeah, I didn't attack. He said it at deadline, like I didn't attack. But, you know, I basically just went along with it to get the spotlight. And now he's actually attacking the breakout tournament people. Um, So I kind of like how they kept that for him and branched off from Trick and Mello. But I think Waller's going to get a win because 
if he's medically cleared and I think they just said that he is, um, I, I think it makes sense to keep going with the storyline. Yeah. Maybe we see the attacker on SmackDown and, uh, th- maybe that's the reveal. It's a bit, it's a good, it's a good way to get more eyes on NXT and do a, the payoff to an angle. That's true. That's true. Do it on your, do it on your highly rated SmackDown and, and then, Hey, I have everybody tune in NXT to find, find out the fallout. Mm -hmm. Um, CM Punk made his decision. He's signing with raw. I love how they, they did this with Randy Orton when he signed with SmackDown saying exclusive with that brand, which when we know, there is no such thing as exclusive to a brand because they'll put them on whatever show they want. They, you know, the brand split died like three weeks after the draft. Uh, he also, conf- Seth Rollins came in the ring to confront him, and there's this, you know, there's this tension because Seth, quote, you know, allegedly doesn't like him. Uh, I guess my question Based on what we have seen, especially his tenure in AEW, does CM Punk last longer than a year? I think so. Yeah. I think I there's been a rumor that there's a you know like a good behavior clause in his contract. So I think if that is one hundred percent fact that'll keep him in line. But I also think uh, coming back and mending fences and, you know, people are at different points in their life. Plus maybe he learned from AEW. Maybe he knows that that's not going to fly in WWE. Like I think there's a few more reasons why it's going to work. And I think you're seeing it right now where, uh, even if Seth Rollins is hundred percent telling the truth and he doesn't like CM Punk, he's willing to work with him for the greater good. We didn't see that in AEW. Yeah. We didn't see that in AEW. It fell apart and he's gone. And, you know, much, much like Cody should have won at WrestleMania. I saw this earlier today. The EVPs should have taken that meeting with CM Punk. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff going on right now that you know in hindsight could have been a lot different but i think he's going to last because you're you're seeing it on tv like he's working with people that apparently have a problem with him i think they're all level-headed and know at the end of the day that they're in a money-making business so let's go make as much money as we can yeah yeah i i think i think it's possible i think it's possible yeah you know he had that little line at the end of the initial promo about I'm here to here to make you know not to make mm-hmm. friends I'm here to make money and I think that's that's his that's got to be his thought process throughout mm-hmm. this tenure he's here to make money and so he's going to do what it takes to make the money so mm-hmm. um Cody Rhodes Shinsuke Nakamura this rivalry started you know we got the match on Monday night, Cody's about to hit the crossroads on Nakamura. Nakamura slips out, spews the poison mist. Uh, How long do you see this program lasting? Is this just to tide everybody over until they start really building towards Royal Rumble? I think so. It it feels like it's one of those holding pattern sort of feuds where they know where they want to get them. I still think Cody challenges for the title on one, probably night two of mania, but I think this is just to kind of give them another feud until they, I'm going to say they, they set whatever he's doing up at the rumble. I think we get the, the new year's match uh, with Nakamura and then, maybe like a little bit of an interaction in in the rumble is sort of like the transition from that to whoever he's working with. Right. Yeah. I I'm, I'm there with you. 
Next Monday night, it's the night of tag title matches. You got Finn Balor and um, Damien Priest defending against the Creeds. And it really feels like maybe the Creeds are going to get the win. They Maybe they win the titles this one. I, I don't think it's a bad decision at all. Like these guys are super impressive what they can do in the ring. Uh, and then when you think about the storyline, like judgment day, I think maybe starting to see them lose the titles and then tease some tension with like priest holding the briefcase. Uh, I don't know if Rhea loses her title too, but I think maybe this is sort of starting to set up their implosion. I don't know if they break up, but I think they're they're definitely going to tease some sort of dissension in the ranks. They, you know, it will. And if it's another tease, they've been teasing it mm-hmm. for a few months now. It's it it's gotten kind of to the point. Look, if you're going to go there, let's go there. Mm-hmm. Let's let's you know let's not just tease it and then a few weeks you know a week or two later win back the tiles and everything's hunky dory again. Mm-hmm. It let's let's really set this up and and you know maybe you know I've heard the I th- I think the popular notion might be Priest gets booted out and Drew McIntyre joins them, which that just feels really odd. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. It, it but it feels like yeah if they're gonna if they're gonna do something Let's do it. Let's not just play with it and then go back to hunky dory land. The other one, and you know, it's been talked about that the women's tag titles are cursed. I think the one way to keep the curse from happening is simply don't, don't defend them. Cause it feels like for the first time in months, Chelsea green and Piper Niven are going to defend the tag, the women's tag titles mm-hmm. against Carter and chance is i'm thinking uh piper did the the seance or whatever to to try to uncurse them she had the crystals out and all that good stuff yeah maybe she only delayed it maybe i it just which may makes me think okay maybe they, they either they only they the the curse could only be you know pushed away for so long and now that they sense the curse might be coming back, they're gonna get they're gonna drop them before they before something happens to them. I don't know. Uh, I, f- I feel so like bad for see- everybody involved. I do. It- too. I mean, and I'd like to see Carter and Chance win them, but mm-hmm. man, those titles have had such a bad rap and such a bad history. Mm-hmm. By the way, I, I want to get bef- before we switch gears. Get your thoughts. The there's been the whispers, the talk around the campfire. Mercedes Monet is looking to go back to WWE and be Sasha Banks again. I the I think the the word is the price tag is pretty high. I'll let's let, let's put this. Um, does she return to WWE by the Raw after WrestleMania? Uh, it's possible. I I wouldn't be opposed. I mean, she's training right now, and I would have to think that she wants to maybe finish with japan on a high note Mm -hmm. and wrestle kingdoms in january so maybe we see like a will osprey situation where she you know has a a few dates in japan or somewhere else where she gets to do what she wants and then agrees to come back you know april what is it april 8th or whatever the day that is that first weekend in april It'd be a great surprise, although people are talking about it, so maybe it's not too much of a surprise. But I, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shocked at this point. 
Yeah. I, it, it seems I, like she had a good relationship with Triple H. Yeah. And if Vince is gone, and I don't know if that was her issue, but it seems like she had a great relationship with Triple H. And we've seen what he's done with other people coming back, CM Punk especially. I wouldn't I wouldn't be too shocked to see her back. Yeah, I'm I'm there with you. I, I think it's very possible. Again, the money's gotta be there. I, I get that, but I think it's it's very possible. I'm not sure it would happen in time for her to appear at Mania. Mm. But yeah, Raw after Mania, I could see that. Uh, oh, uh, NXT deadline happened on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Dragon Lee beat Dominic Mysterio to become the new North American champion. You had Trick Williams and Blair Davenport end up being the Iron Survivors in their respective matches. Anything stand out uh, from NXT deadline? I really enjoyed that North American title match and the men's iron survivor challenge um still women's still cage match was still pretty good too but uh i i enjoyed dragon lee and, and dominic dominic losing was a was a pretty big surprise and then just the story with trick and when braun got in the match like he got those three quick pinfalls uh that that was pretty cool um yeah I, I went to the show, so it was pretty pretty fun sitting in the crowd and just watching everybody go nuts for those two matches in particular. Real quick, the uh, the Roxanne Perez and um, Kiana James cage match. It ends when what was her name? Izzy something mm-hmm. comes out, slams the cage door on Roxanne's head, and Kiana gets the win. Was that a was that a instance of who are you or because I didn't know her? Yeah, uh, a lot of people thought it was Tiffany Stratton because we couldn't like I where I was sitting like I only saw uh, the cage door slam and she was wearing all black so like the black outfit against the barricade like I couldn't really see her through the cage. So that was hard enough. But then once she got in the ring, I was like, wait, is that because they I think they aired a uh, backstage promo with Tiffany right before that. And she was wearing something different, but her hair was similar. Mm -hmm. So that's why even I was like, is that her? Like, what's going on? And then we figured out that it it was Izzy Dame. And. It was a little confusing. Well, that's the thing. I get when they, you know, they want to do these things and that's wonderful, but dad gum it, let it be someone that people know, not some newcomer or, you know, somebody that nobody knows who they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would think that's kind of, you know, basic booking one oh one, but it was just like, I was like, you know, they said this Izzy Dame per I'm going, who? And what does she have to do with the match? And yeah, I don't get. It. I didn't uh, have too much of a problem with it. It's just I couldn't see who it was, and just airing the promo that had a girl that looks exactly like her right before that. And I saw them blowing like a fire extinguisher in the arena, and I thought that was kind of weird. I was like, oh, maybe it's they're setting up like a special entrance for one of them. I'm wondering in hindsight if they were trying to cover up, trying to hide her under the ring. Hmm. So it was just, I don't have a problem with them trying to do that. It's just, I think having that promo first and then trying to figure out who she was, like it would, I think it would have been fine on a, on a TV show, but just try to, try to fix it for next time, I guess. Exactly. Uh, Let's switch gears. Talk AEW. Um, you had the Continental Classic match, Andrade and uh, Brian Danielson on Collision, which was taped last Tuesday, but it aired on Saturday. Andrade gets the win. Danielson ends up bleeding from basically his eye socket, where you know his orbital bone was repaired, surgically repaired. 
I asked Mike Sempervivi about this last week. I'll ask you. Give me a justification why you would have a basically one-eyed Brian Danielson in this tournament just for the sake of I, I don't know what. When he's all he also has the match at Wrestle Kingdom against Okada. It feels like having him wrestle right now is a huge risk. And we like I said saw it with the blood coming from the eye socket. I think I, there, I know there was a, a lot of concern when that came out and they said that that part was an angle, but I think there is still going to be a lot of concern just because he had the legitimate injury and then still like, I think he took, an orange punch and then the move from Okada. So like he was already injured there. He wrestled with it and they did that basically to further the angle for the wrestle kingdom match. All right. You get him out of that situation, but then bringing him back, it feels like, like I, maybe they wanted star power in the tournament. Maybe he pushed to do it. Maybe he's, better off than they're letting on but if it was me i would have probably given him a little bit more time to heal up but that's knowing kind of what we know yeah well and again you know with that to put him in this tournament i thought was risky mm -hmm. for him we know his his history with injuries and such he's already said this is his final year in the ring, I get the desire to see him in the ring, but man, just got to protect the guy's health every night, you know, at, in, at all costs. Uh, we saw Riho come back on Dynamite, confront Tony Storm. I, I would suspect that's probably going to be her next challenger, I guess, at World's End, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, just give me your thoughts on Riho. I'm going to assume she still lives in Japan. Thus, the reason why we only see her periodically. I, that true? I'm assuming that's still the case. Like okay. maybe it's like a Pac situation where he still lives in England. They, you know, he flies over for as often as they want to use him or whatever. But, um, I wouldn't be surprised to see either her win again or have this be like a, a one-off feud. I don't know if that's because of her situation or I feel like you can only, you know, kind of like we were talking about Roman before, like I think you can only carry out this timeless Tony thing for so long. Yeah. And I'm enjoying it. Don't get me I, wrong. I like it, but it's like, how much do you, how much do you push it? Right, it has a shelf life. So, mm -hmm. um, MJF, the AEW World Champion, was on the red carpet at the Los Angeles premiere of the Iron Claw. Saw the picture with him and John Cena. Uh, saw the picture with him and Liv Morgan. Other wrestlers there included, of course, Kevin Von Erich, Lacey Von Erich. Baron Corbin, C.J. Perry, Chavo Guerrero, who worked on the movie, mm -hmm. Ryan Nemeth. Uh, MJF, is is he going to be the next wrestler that catches the acting bug and might see him a little more in Hollywood? Possible. I I saw it. Like, have you seen the movie yet? I have not seen I, I Actually, I have my ticket to see it next Thursday. I saw a screening last, I think it was last Tuesday. Okay. Uh, I really enjoyed the movie. I think if you already go in understanding that um, Hollywood's going to take liberties in certain areas, like you'll be okay with it. Like we already, we already knew that they cut the one brother out. Uh, Chris Von Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
And my assumption is that they just didn't want to tell the same story over as far as, you know, how, how he died or, you know, just, and it sounds really silly to say like all the family members dying is redundant or something, but like, that's the only thing I could come up with is they didn't, they didn't want to hit that same beat over and over and it it really becomes like Kevin's story, I think. Yeah. Um, I I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking forward to the embargo. I think lifted today, so I'm I'm excited to see what people think about it. Yeah, and... I'm excited to see it as well. Um, I've gotten to know Ross Marshall over the last few years. I've talked to Kevin mm-hmm. a couple times. Uh, I know a lot of people. You know, you know, being in Texas. We, there are a lot of people that worked at Sportatorium back in the day, and you hear all the stories. And I've talked, I've talked to, I've do- talked to Bill Mercer uh, on several occasions. He would come, he would come here and call baseball. Uh, there's a, we have the Texas Rangers AAA affiliate here in the Austin area, Brown Rock Express, and he would come and call baseball with mm-hmm. uh, with Mike Caps, and I was able to, I'd be be able to sit down with him and just talk about those days found out for instance the so the 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 original parade of champions where Kerry wins the world title off of rick flair mm-hmm. the only reason he was not the man on the call while why it was mark lawrence it was his day off that's it he had a day off schedule for that day so mark lawrence you know took over the play-by-play duties and mark lawrence is the voice you hear calling that victory so um but yeah so i'm 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 really looking forward to seeing it i know they also cut out you know mjf plays lance von eric or ricky vaughn or whatever you want to call him but it's a basically a fleeting maybe 10 15 seconds of him as as lance that's um, ten tens being generous. Okay, it's yeah. very, very brief. And I, from what I've seen after that is he had a, a little bit more time a, in the original cut. And it looks like they just cut it. Yeah. Like I would have liked to have seen them keep that in because I think that is quick enough where they can explain why Fritz hired another guy to be one of their brothers and, it didn't have to be like this huge storyline. I think it, I, my one yeah, complaint is the movie could have been longer to yeah, fit in some of that stuff. I get that. I, I think it was, I think it was a matter of, they wanted to focus on the brothers. Lance as their quote cousin was, that was a, that's more of a world-class story rather than a Von Eric story. So I can kind of see why they they cut that out. I'm I'm with you though. Having seen pretty much every documentary that there is on the Von Erics and on World Class Championship Wrestling, there you know obviously you want to see some things happening. Um, uh, I wanted to get your thoughts. Ring of Honor final battle this Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. It'll be on Honor Club. It's not on Bleacher Report or YouTube or any of that. They're they're pushing everybody to go subscribe to Honor Club. It's going to be at the Curtis Colwell Center in Garland up in the Metroplex. Uh, you and I were both on the media conference call today with Tony Khan. Give me your overall impression of Tony talking about Final Battle today uh, and just kind of Give me your thoughts on on Friday's event. I'm excited now that it's the week of. Um, last week, in the past couple of weeks, it felt like you could almost forget that there was a pay-per-view going to happen. But um, I like Keith Lee versus Shane Taylor. Athena versus Billy Starks is a great main event. And then... Uh, yeah, I'm a big Ethan Page fan, so I like the I Quit match with Tony Nese, and then the yeah. the Jay Briscoe fight without honor. Uh, I think it, you know, it, it's a nice way to honor him and get a match that's 
you know, arguably going to steal the show with FTR and Mark against uh, Black Bull Combat Club. Again, Danielson in the match. <laughs> Why is he in there? But uh, I, I hope they don't do anything too crazy, but, you know. Yeah, I'm there with you. I'm, you know, Keith Lee and Shane Taylor, look, I called matches of theirs mm-hmm. back in the Pretty Boy Killer days. Um, they'd wrestle in the Austin area and even, you know, San Antonio, whatever. Uh, I've known both of them for years. I consider both of them friends. So that one's going to be that, that one's going to be interesting to watch. You're right. I think the Jay Briscoe fight without honor, I think there's going, that's going to be really emotional for that very reason with FTR and Mark Briscoe now teaming to take on Claudio, John Moxley, and Brian Danielson. Again, like you said, Danielson in a match, a fight without honor by, you know, oh, by the way. Um, but yeah, Athena and Billy Starks, that should be fun. Um, I'm with you. I'm the same way about Ethan Page. I think he's one of the best. He is way underutilized on television. I think he needs to have more TV time because he is just so good. He, he, there's very little wasted wasted time with him. Uh, he, he does everything well. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be up there. Uh, I'll be in Garland for that event. Ring of Honor Final Battle this Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Uh, get it on Honor Club if you're in either the Metroplex or even around it or even if you're here in Austin. Make the three-hour drive up I-35. Go be at the Curtis Colwell Center in Garland and check it out. He is Bill Pritchard. He is the managing editor of WrestleZone. Catch everything that they put out, WrestleZone.com. Bill, I appreciate it, man. Uh, All the best to you. If I don't talk to you before then, have a wonderful Christmas. Happy holidays. uh, And enjoy the rest of 2023. Thank you for having me on. This is uh, always a good time. Uh, And like you said, if I don't talk to you, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and enjoy a final battle.